Yellow. That's the name of today's mini painting main event. Yellow. And uh, stolen. And theft. Forgery. Or, you know, what we artists call inspiration. Greetings, good humans, and welcome to Tabletop Alchemy, where sometimes we steal ideas and paint up two iterations of the same model by the same company. And we thank our patrons for aiding and abetting these blatant acts of larceny. All right, yes, larceny is the wrong word, but who cares? It sounded good, so that justifies it. All right, let's get right into it. Today, I've got two minis from the pile of opportunity that I bought so long ago and so far apart that... I didn't realize until I put them on some bases that they are the same character. These are the old and new versions of the Warhammer Beast Lord. Anyway, the, the older figure is, I think, a fine cast resin dupe of an old metal figure, and the other is a digitally sculpted injection molded plastic kit. Actually, I don't, I don't know for sure if Games Workshop sculptors work digitally. I, I'm just assuming, because that's always a good idea to assume things, right? And if you're curious, these bases are from MicroArt Studio, which I use quite a bit because years ago, Miniature Market, uh, miniaturemarket.com, had a ridiculous stock like cleanout sale, and I got, I don't know, maybe like 15 or 20 sets of various bases from these guys for like $2 a package. It was just one of those sales where you're like, that's either a mistake or I don't know, either way, I'm just lucky, so I bought a bunch. So my inspiration for painting these guys, and in fact, the whole reason I even bought them and the matching Gores kit that's going to be coming in another video real soon is right here. Darcy Bono's paint scheme for her Beast Lord and Goatman and associated other Goatman characters. I just love the use of yellow and the sort of color matched bases that she did. Now you'll note one of the major differences between her scheme and mine, at least on these two, is the skin tone. And she did the awesomely contrasty dark gray slash black skin tone. And I did another round of the purple based warm skin tone I did on the Curse City Ogre. Here's the thing. A lot of times I remember like one detail of something I saw that I thought was super cool. And then I'll go merrily on my way thinking one day I'll do something like that. And then the day comes and I merrily go about using that inspirational but faulty memory because because I'm too lazy to go and look up the original inspiration, I just forge ahead like a numbskull. And I do this all the time. I don't, I don't know why. And then I go and look up the source of inspiration after the fact and find out every time that I only remembered like one part of the thing and sometimes even the whole memory is wrong. I don't know if I would have copied the dark gray skin if I had looked it up beforehand, but there's no arguing that the contrast between the dark gray and the yellow is fantastic, where my skin tone choice creates a much less contrasty look. But you know, I've got a whole box of gores I have to work on and I'll probably do some of those in dark gray because mostly when I do full units, I always like to vary up the skin tones anyway. So I'm using the same stack of Citadel skin colors I used on that ogre. And so we start with the darkest one, darkest. So we start with the darkest one, the good old Bugman's Glow. Uh, I put this on pretty thin and I do a couple of passes. I guess I'm just doing a layering technique here and even going over the purple in the deepest recesses in places, not sweating anything too much here. Now the Cadian Flesh Tone for the second highlight and I'm not mixing the previous paint with this one. I'm just going for it, layering it up like a madman. I am thinning it, but again, I'm not worrying too much about it. I'm, I'm just trying to get in there, put some highlights where they look okay. And the last highlight is good old Kislev Flesh. And this one I am thinning pretty good and just hitting the tippy tops of all the muscles. Now I know I'm gonna lay down a wash over all this. So again, worry free is the mode of the day. Now, since the last couple of times I used the tanned skin express color, I had issues with it like chunking up. And like I mentioned in the last video, I wondered if the extra medium I was using was maybe having an issue. So I went with this Dwarf Skin Express color and I really mixed it heavily with the medium. I'd say probably two to one on the medium side just to see if I was gonna have any issues. But it seems to work fine. Now I actually wish I'd thinned it a bit less just to make the color a bit heavier, but overall this mixture didn't have any issues. 
Now, from the beginning, I knew I was going to go for a black fur color for these guys because I wanted to stay away from warmer tones like browns and stuff, which would blend with the skin and, and the coming yellow main event. So I put down this neutral gray on our Goatman's dreads, not really filling in all the black, just hitting all the wavy locks and not stressing, again, too much. Now, on the Plastic Beast Lord, I decided on a whim to put down a base layer of a grayer brown just because, even though I literally told myself I wasn't going to put warm colors on the fur, I just did it anyway. I don't know why. Uh, I think just to maybe give this model's dreads a, a, a bit of a change up from the other guy. Anyway, I still went in with that neutral gray. I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but you know, whatever. Now I thinned down some greasy black express color with a two to one medium mix and put it down as a darkening slash softening wash over all the dreads and locks and stuff. Cause I like washes. I know washes are supposed to be the earmark of a noob, but they're just too fun and easy to use that I, I can't seem to give them up. I'm just, I guess an eternal noob. Maybe that's a t-shirt. Eternal newbie. Huh. All right. Now it's summing me up. So now time to prep all the fabric or, or whatever areas that are going to be yellow. Now yellow isn't going to go down over all this black with any sort of practical use. So I'm using this light sand color to give our yellow a good bright base. Now this paint is probably too light. It's Maybe got too much white in it, which makes it kind of chalky. But again, I'm not stressing about it. The, the sort of modeled pattern it's creating is probably a good thing for the overall distressed or grunginess factor or, you know, the, the weathered look we kind of want for these guys in the end. And there's both figures prepped for the main event, the yellow. But then, because I guess I don't work linearly as much as I, I think I do, I decided apparently to base the horns next. I used this pretty cool weird brown beige color for the horns in an effort to sort of set them apart from some of the other colors on the model at this point. And then there are the leather bits, of course. There's always tons of leather bits on GW models, right? Or actually any fantasy models, really. I don't know why, but for some reason I decided to go with a reddish brown leather, even knowing it'd be close to the skin tone. Maybe it's because these guys are probably wearing what's left of their brothers after a battle. I mean, they're goat men and they're wearing leather, right? I mean, they're just walking Texas Chainsaw Massacre maniacs, right? And they're probably cannibals too, right? I mean, according to the Wheel of Time, they eat humans. I mean, they probably think everything just tastes like chicken. Now, with the Axe Haft's leather, Axe Haft's leather, that's correct, right? Now, with the Axe Haft's leather wrappings done in that reddish brown, I thought I would try to make the wooden portions of those handles not another just brown wood color. So I went in with this greenish gray to sort of base out what in my mind would be kind of a mossy or moldy wood look in the end. I mean, I kind of have a plan. We'll see. Although I don't know why you'd want your ax halves to be moldy because they're likely to break if they're rotten. It's fantasy. It's a fantasy world, man. Come on. Aesthetics reign supreme. Anyway, always in my... Always one of my favorite techniques is to just grab a bit of wet paint off the palette and use it somewhere to paint something else where it's needed. And thus the skull gets hit with that same light sand I used for the yellow prep areas. And there, another it's just on the palette sort of thing. I just mixed some of that green gray with the neutral gray and hit the beheaded heads dreads with it. Yes, I know none of these hair pieces are dreads. I'm just being cool. And you know, if you have to tell someone you're being cool, then you are. Definitely the coolest dude in the room. Right? Fun fact, while I highlight these leather and horn bits, my brother, who's three years younger than me and has a master's in, I'm not really sure, something like forest hydrology or, or something like that. I mean, he hates people and wanted a job where he could just wander the woods for weeks on his own, measuring nature stuff. Uh, up until around five years ago, he had dreadlocks that reached his ankles. You could not even go to a grocery store with the guy. It was like walking around with a celebrity. People would just come up to him all the time to compliment him or sometimes just to stare at him or ask him how long he'd been growing the things. But, you know, they, they were impressive. He used to ride a motorcycle and he would never even wear a scarf because he'd just wrap those dreads all around his neck and stuff and, and he was good to go. When he decided to cut them off in order to get a city job, he saved them. They're hanging in one of his closets right now, and they weigh like 10 pounds. Yeah, my brother's 
cool as shit. Okay, so here's me adding some more clown, co I mean, some more color to the model. I mean, this guy has this big old pouch where he carries his fallen brothers in their jerkified form, you know, his lunch bag. Or, you know, maybe it's his, his goat jerky bag. Anyway, he's got this pouch and I was like, I could put some crazy color on that and that'll be fine. That's how he, he knows it's his. So no other goat boys, nick his jerky. Nick his jerky. This is, someone should just stop you, man. All of my scripts are just a plea for help. <laughs> <laughs> Using some more palette paint, I highlighted the hooves with some streaky streaks. I don't know, they, they could have just been black, but you know, whatever. Streaks are fun. To kind of make this big frontal skull stand out a little bit, I went in with this weird British khaki color. It, it's kind of, kind of like this greenish, yellowish, beige-ish. And if we're going to run with the cannibal dreadlocked goat man thing, then this skull, this skull has got to be this dude's mom, right? I mean, like, he was just a mama's boy that couldn't let go. She used to do his laundry all the time, and now he wears her skull on his armor to ward off any insults on the battlefield. Insult warder. I don't know. Insert a yo mama joke here. I used this brighter, weird, yellowish, greenish beige called Middlestone, which is, it's a cool color, to highlight the mama skull. And mom's skull has some straps holding it onto the armor, and I thought, well, they could be reddish brown leather, but we could also make them blue. Some pretty wraps for mom's head. I used some thinned down greasy black to shade the horns and then I, I also popped in a bit of unthinned greasy black to darken the bases of the horns a bit more. Just a typical wet blended horn gradient sort of color, right? One day I am going to paint something that doesn't look typical. I swear it. By the power of Mother Skull. Ah, oh, there's some Athenian camo shade for the weird green axe halves just to blend them in a bit. And then some good old Agrax earth shade across all the leather pieces to darken them right up or darken them right down. Anyway, now it's time for the main event, the yellow. Vallejo's express color line has a few yellows and I decided to first go with the brightest one with the idea that we're gonna shade it down right with other transparent colors this imperial yellow is actually a pretty cool color it's very bright and punchy i mean it's good to know for the future right why am i asking you like it's a question it, it's just good to know how bright this is for future uses where i might want some yellow somewhere and i definitely put two coats on all the bits because it, it does go on fairly thin even just straight <laughs> unthinned it's still pretty thin. Then I went in with this darker yellow and put, I put at least one coat on there. I don't remember if I doubled up on this one as well or if one coat was enough. I don't remember. Then while that was drying, I added some of the thinned out greasy black that was still on the palette to darken the hooves a bit more. And I used some thinned out bag of bones express color to wash old mama's skull. Cause she's gotta be purdy. Her boy remembers her just so. <laughs> yes, I agree. This gag has either gone too far or not nearly far enough. <laughs> I used some reddish brown express color tinted with just a touch of black to wash all the main event yellow, specifically to grunge all the yellow up and stain it and generally weather it a bit. I left spots of it to pool just to get some ugly stains on some of the cloth areas. And overall, it's doing what I want. Maybe it's a bit too warm or reddish in tone, but... I don't know, it's okay, I guess. Now I debated, yes, with myself, dotting all the little rivets with black, but once I started, I, I figured kind of against my better judgment to just do all of them. Now I'm, I'm kind of glad I did. I wanted to keep the bases kind of in line with the overall color scheme for some reason, so I went in with a reddish brown base coat, but of course I had to make the stone on this one more gray. And all of this I'm doing with the full intention of putting down a healthy dose of terrain flock and, and maybe tufts and leaves and stuff. But I had to paint the bases or at least get some color on them before the next step, which is the ultra matte step. Because I wanted to matte everything down before applying the metallics. And speaking of metallics, I cannot seem to stop buying metallics from different brands just to try them all out. So today I'm using Vallejo Game Color Metallics. I picked up four colors and while they're not stupendous, they're not super terrible either. This dark gunmetal is darker than my favorite scale 75 black metal, so I like that. 
and it's almost as smooth as the Scale 75 stuff, but it's also shinier than the Scale 75 stuff that I normally use. Now, I tried out the polished gold, and while it's bright and super saturated, it's not very smooth. I guess it's just sort of like an average crappy gold metallic. I, I, all the gold metallics seem to be clumpy and weird from everyone except Scale 75, so maybe that's an issue with... I, I guess it must be an issue with whatever it takes to make a gold metallic color. Anyway, I was going to do the whole shoulder pauldron and dark metal, but I thought the cross motif thing would be a good place to, you know, test out more of the gold. Then, just to compare, on the model, I put down some Scale 75 black metal. Now, you can see it's lighter and less shiny than the Vallejo dark metal, but you can also see it's so much smoother and nicer to work with. You can also see that the texture of whatever the metallic filler material is in both of the paints seems to be finer in the scale 75 version but that shine from the vallejo is pretty compelling oh i gotta pick out the teeth mom would be proud now i was gonna just do the null and oil thing on all the steel bits but i decided to blue it up with some coelia green shade just to set it off from the warmer colors covering basically most of the rest of the model or models and I actually wished I'd added some more of the blue shade just to make it even more readable. Now I used this skin ink again to create some rust, but I didn't wash entire pieces down. I just dabbed it on and that's not quite the right way to do it. Maybe with the full strength ink. It just looks like pools of paint instead of rust. So I spent a bunch more time trying to correct this kind of to no avail. Actually in the end it might've turned out okay. I added some brighter spots with a thinned down traditional rust color. I mean like a traditional paint version of a rust color. I even went back in with some black just to try to break up the attempted rust even more and whatever. Sometimes you just get stuck in a mental block. Like a lot of humans. And when I say you, I mean me. Now for some edge highlighting and chipping on the steel bits. I wanted to see what this Vallejo Silver was like and it's pretty good for this kind of stuff. It's super bright and shiny. It's not really smooth, nothing like their metal color line, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. But I should have switched brushes at this point because this Squidmar brush just does not have a sharp tip. It, it never really did. And trying to use it like a sharp tip brush was just a dumb thing to do. And this is what a lazy person sounds like. So instead of switching brushes, I just kept dabbing away disliking what I was doing and not doing anything to change it. There's something very human about that statement, isn't there? So it is what it is. I think part of my problem is I heard something years ago about never use sable brushes with metallics as the metallic medium or filler, the little chippy chips in there or whatever will tear up expensive natural hair brushes. So I've always been hesitant to use my good brushes with metallics. I have enough sable brushes stockpiled, so I need to just get over this and use one and, and see what happens. I'm gonna do that next time, I swear. All right, there we go. Two Beast Lords, one with his mama held close. Overall, I, I think I like them. I like the older Sculpt Beast Lord. Maybe, a, I think maybe it came out a little better on the grungy side of things, but I think that's because that one has much less like skin showing. The newer model, I like it too, but it, it's maybe a little cartoony with all the colors going on. I don't think it's bad, but he'd probably benefit from a, a good oil wash just to grime him up a bit. I guess overall, I, I, I'm pretty happy with him. Well, now I just got to build up and paint 10 more for the Rangers of Shadow Deep scenarios. Cool. So I guess I have a color scheme, as stolen as it is, and I'm looking forward to them, even though they're going to have to be 100% speed painted to get done in time. Anyway, go slay some gray, which I, I stole that too. <laughs> See ya.